Hello, Zero K fans. Welcome back to Nanolids at Dawn. This is Shadow Fury 333, remaining your host. And we are on to the last match for tonight, which is going to be El Torero versus Yurga on Desert Plateaus. Which is a map that. It's kind of weird because there are a lot of high value mexes that aren't very well connected. It's difficult to control any portion of the map. And it's. Also kind of tricky to know what to build. So Yorga going for Amphib, El Torero going for light vehicles. Now because of the size, light vehicles make sense, but all of these plateaus are bot passable only. So Yorga is going to have a much easier time just going around the map, coming in from unexpected angles, generally building around, building radar everywhere, that sort of thing. While El Torero is going to have an easier time sniping anything that's undefended. Assuming they know what's going on. And they do know that Yorga's going for Amphibs, so El Torero is probably, let's see, against Ducks. I mean, we saw Light Vehicle versus Amphib on Isle of Grief between, I believe it was Icons and Aquanim. But that, or was it Icons or Ivan D? Was Icons, I was right the first time. Icons and Aquanim. Which was interesting because the Light Vehicle response was Ravager and. Slasher. A response I agree with, but I don't think El Torero is going to be going for that. It looks like they're, looks like they're just thinking. At this point, they're not really sure what to build up against Yorga's forces. Because against Duck, you want something to tank. Scorchers don't last especially long, and they get hit hard by the splash damage. But at the same time, if you can get a bunch of them through the first wave of missiles, they'll tear apart the Ducks no problem. And also, they will harass everything really well. And on a map this big, Isle of Grief is considerably less of a mobile map. There are far fewer ways you can go. But Desert Plateaus, there are a lot of paths. So for El Torero, it's going to be a matter of trying to figure out what the best path is. And with Scorchers, they can do that. Ravagers and Sc Slashers, not so much. But the problem still remains, how is El Torero going to be able to get through the ducks without losing their entire army in the process? Or in this case, their commander, El Torero, is aware of the ducks. They are aware of the ducks positioning to the radar. Yurga hasn't actually built radar yet, relying entirely on line of sight, which I don't agree with, but is rather interesting. Not sure why they're relying entirely on line of sight, but... I suppose they figured that the map has all these plateaus and it's difficult for radar to really work well. But they're playing Amphib. They have bots. They can put radar on high plateaus. They have to do it a bit more than they would on most flatter maps, but still, it's not worthless. Far from it. Anyway, Yurga is pretty much ahead at this point. El Torero has no real army. They do have some slashers, sorry, some scorchers running around trying to do what they can, but still, it, it's tough, really. It's going to be difficult for El Torero to deal with these ducks. This south expansion is dead. The north expansion can be attacked any time. Scorcher's going to do what it can, but two shots, it dies. And another Scorcher coming in, which is soon going to die as well. These ducks, they are tough to deal with. And this is the problem, getting through the ducks before the Scorchers die. But El Torero managing it with a couple Scorchers, a couple Scorcher corpses, but still, this isn't El Torero's territory, so how much reclaim is this? No? 250 reclaim, or 250 metal worth of reclaim. That's good. Pull that in there, and get even with Yurga for economy for about a minute. So that would be that would be useful. I don't think that El Torero is gonna do that immediately, though. They really should, but no. It looks like they're focused a bit more on using the metal they have now. Going for levelers, not ravagers, but levelers. Not a bad idea. And the darts being thrown in, nice. That's what you need to use them for. Use them to distract shots. Throw off. Basically, use them as chaff. You throw them in. The shot. The missiles hit them instead. They don't hit the Scorchers. Except when the Scorchers are on the wrong side of a small hill and end up shooting at the hill itself. That was unfortunate. As El Ferrero so rudely points out. But understandably salty. Understandably very salty. At any rate, Yurga is... They're really just getting more and more ahead. They have the territory advantage. They have the economy advantage. 
They do only have ducks, and El Torero is setting themselves up to counter ducks, but are they setting th themselves up to counter ducks in the correct points in the map? They know where they need to go. Like I said, they have radar. Yurga does have radar now. They have decided to go for radar. But El Torero was completely aware this was coming. And the Slashers here are going to be able to prevent pretty much any meaningful damage. Yeah, the only damage dealt there was to Yurga's own forces. Really good for El Torero, but they, El Torero still does not have this area here. Granted, I suppose they wouldn't because of the ducks. But that is a bit of a tough thing. And Yurga's commander now being threatened, El Torero does... Wow. Okay, Yurga's probably going to run away with their commander pretty soon. But that's a lot of damage being dealt right there. And that defender is completely vulnerable. Now, if Yurga loses their commander, they still will be ahead of El Torero economically. El Torero is... not doing so hot. And also not building up enough. They need more energy. At this point, that's not the bottleneck, but they still need it. But nice push in the center. Putting some pressure on Yurga, making sure that Yurga can't get away with just building along the map. Keeping them honest. That's good to see. But El Torero is still very threatened along the side. These ducks can come in. They probably could get rid of that Lotus. So there are still problems. There are still issues that need to be dealt with here. And... Nice use of the Dominatrix, though. So at this point, Yurga needs to switch strategy, and they have. Switching over to Grizzly, a bit of an extreme switch, but that will work, I suppose. No boys. No scallops. I mean, boys would be making a lot more sense. Scallops wouldn't, but boys actually would make a lot of sense. Nope, going straight to Grizzly. That is the choice. And El Torero is going to be able to do a lot of damage in the meantime. Waiting for that Grizzly to come. That's going to be an issue. That Grizzly is still going to take another several minutes and the... Um, wait, really? Oh, yeah. Yurga's setting up... Well, oh, losing energy. Desperately trying to repair the commander, morph the commander, get it up to level... Level, level 1. Just to give it some rudimentary defenses. But at this point, El Torero is... It's going to be able to wipe out everything. Assuming they, get, they need to get the Grizzly quickly enough, that's the only problem. That is still an issue. El Torero still doesn't have the most solid position. If they could take out the south section, that would allow them to better secure this, I think. At least they'd be able to secure the reclaim and work from there. But they're desperately trying to get rid of the commander. They're just trying to get rid of all the metal extractors they can and everything they can, but the Grizzly has been up for a couple seconds now. And now more ducks coming in. The Grizzly is going to pose a pretty big problem. Although I suppose if the Dominatrix comes in a range that won't be as big of a problem, but still, that Grizzly... It's gonna be... It's probably gonna get rid of the Commander pretty soon. This Commander with the Riot Cannon... No, sorry, not the Riot Cannon. That was a leveler. But yeah, two shots and the Commander goes down. One more shot! Grizzly deal 1,500 damage a shot, so that's lucky for El Torero that that Grizzly missed, but El Torero about to lose their commander right now. Bam. That commander's down. El Torero, looks like they're trying to get reclaimed now, but that's not enough. And they don't have, the biggest problem I think that El Torero has had, the biggest mistake they've made, they have, like, what production they've had, or rather what economy they have had, they haven't pushed into production. So while their army was pretty impressive while the Grizzly was being constructed, it's now having to deal with the Grizzly. And that's a pretty apocalyptic thing to deal with. If your army isn't ready, that's going to tear you to shreds. So El Torero right now, I mean, they have the anti-heavy stuff. They were, they were somewhat prepared. They have the dominatrices. And if they can dominate the Grizzly, that... Well, at the very least, it'll get... It'll, put Yurga in a position where they were kind of wasting money, but honestly, that paid for itself. That got the commander inside of Yurga's territory. Yurga can just reclaim that and live on that for the rest of the game. That's 500 metal. Yeah, Yurga is already ahead, on top of the reclaim. They just need to get more energy. Both players do, really. El, Tore El Torero is working on the energy situation. Yurga is a little bit less so, but Yurga is also way ahead in the economy, so it's not that big of a deal. I think this appears to be the death blow. Gonna be one last ditch attempt to get rid of this grizzly and get rid of these ducks. 
If that succeeds, then El Torero is still in the game, but otherwise Yurga is going to take this handily. And that will be it. Not really sure though, Scorch is coming in. Best bet, really. That will get rid of the Grizzly as quickly as possible. That Heat Ray, and also just making it hard for the Grizzly to aim, and that Grizzly goes down! Oh, now it goes down. There we go, the Grizzly is down. Very good switch over by El Torero, or at least... Very good choice to construct the Scorchers there. And the second Grizzly is up, that is where they're well aware of that, but four Scorchers got rid of the one Grizzly. Four Scorchers that were against an unsupported Grizzly, but still. Now, Scorchers with support. The Ducks will be a problem, as always. But El Torero, despite their lack of economy, are still holding on really well. If for no other reason than they're just making the right picks for units, making good micro choices, they're just doing everything tactically correct. Or just about everything tactically correct. Everything that they have control over. There was some pathing issues earlier, but other than that, everything they can control, they've been doing well. Doing as well as they can reasonably expect from the information they've had. It's just they're they're at half the economy. If they were on par economically, they would have won this game with this play. Just the economy is the only thing that's really holding them back. They just need more metal, they need more energy. Well, particularly more metal at the moment, but yeah. Other than that, they've been doing really well tactically. But Yoga coming with Banshees, which... I mean, there are already Slashes in play that could deal with it. This is a bit of a risky move with the Banshees. Those Dominatrices get to them. That could turn everything around for El Torero. And the second Grizzly is about... Oh, yeah, already taking two of them. Well, one of them, but still. Dominatrices proving a thorn in their side as... A thorn in the side of the player against them, as always. And once again, the Grizzly is unsupported, and once again, it's gonna go down to these Scorchers. Should go down to the Scorchers anyway. The north side has been torn apart by Yurga. But El Torero... Is he gonna get rid of it? Yes, they got rid of the Grizzly. So another 2,000 medal, but unfortunately, Yurga already reclaiming that first one, and the second one is inside of Yurga's territory, so Yurga is still in a very strong position. They still have the money. If El Torero can break the center and get that reclaim... Well, this, actually, this one is a bit easier to get. The Stardust is not covering the, the Grizzly over to the south. If El Torero can get that... Like, three or four builders just to get that then getting back in this game is a possibility. And just taking the Stardust out right, even better! Get those Masons in there! They're desperately needed right now. You get a couple of those over to that Grizzly, build that up. Because they're losing a lot of the North expansion. Oh wow, the North Metal's going down hard. Priorities! Prioritize that Razor, that's all you have! Ah, El Torero not focusing priorities in this. And that's going to be it. They're going for a last-ditch counterattack, but that's not going to be enough. Very valiant effort, but unfortunately they did not get the Razor up in time. And they no longer have the economy to do that with. They have no metal left. All they Well, they have enough from Reclaim. And that Reclaim is coming in, but now the Masons aren't building fast enough. Trying to get more Masons up. Trying to get more Masons up to repair, that's not going to work. That Razor, if that Razor got up, if the priority on the Razor was set to high, El Torero would have this. I mean, okay, it wouldn't be quite, well, they would have their base back, they'd be able to rebuild. They wouldn't quite have it, but they'd still be in a strong position. Or strong enough position. But hey, Dominique's coming in here. Once again, Dominatrix as the universal counter. But one of them is about to go down. Oh, one of them does go down, causing the Banshees to also go down, so the Banshees can't really be used as a free counterattack force. And at this point, that Razor is too little too late. There's no real reason to build it. El Torero surviving entirely off of Reclaim, but throws in the towel, realizing there's not much they can do. That was actually not bad. El Torero thought they played terribly. Their economy game was not as strong as it could have been, but tactically, micro-wise, and in terms of unit choices, they did excellently. I think they did a great job. They picked... They picked good targets, they picked the right units to attack the counters, and they had... They put pressure where they needed to. The only problem was they didn't have a Razor up here because that was really the only place they could have been hit. 
they didn't get their razor quickly enough here, but that was a desperation move. But most importantly, they didn't have much economy. They were a bit slow to build up the economy. They never really conquered the south side and closed that gap. Because, okay, there's the one choke point here, but against bots, there really is no choke point. Like, the bots, like I said, they can go... Well, okay, almost anywhere. Actually, oh, never mind. I was quite wrong. Spiders can go anywhere. Other bots can't. That's actually a proper choke point. So never mind. This would have been a choke point, but then... If they could... Okay, I guess taking that is a bit hard. Or if they could take these, then it's this choke point, this choke point, well, this choke point, and this choke point to worry about. But there's an extra five metal to worry about it with. Yeah, losing that south side and not really being able to strongly take the north side. Bit of a problem. But still, that wasn't terrible play. That was actually pretty good. So El Tavero, you're being a little too hard on yourself. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. So thanks again for watching, and that's it. So have a good night, everyone.